Hello. Uh, actually, thank you very much for joining. Um, I think basically after listening to Stefan's uh, presentation, you pretty much get the idea of the alliance. I think you, I would hope that uh, you can relax a little bit on some of the scenarios I'm going to share. So this is trying to give you a little bit more uh, detailed perspective in terms of what technology, what uh, scenarios you, you probably can, you know, can use this technology in the, some industry environments. Okay. So, okay. Right, so um, just one slide to get it started. So pretty much, I think uh, Stefan already covered most of it. If you look at the alliance that uh, we, uh, as Stefan pointed out, uh, we have recently realized that basically vertical industry is very important uh, for the alliance, that uh, we have created uh, the so-called industry working group, and I'm very honored to serve as the chair. So my responsibility was to try to understand more from an industry point of view, what are the uh, scenarios that you are actually looking for, uh, what can we do to really bring the gap, to close the gap. Uh, and currently, uh, the focus, uh, from our side is that we have seen, uh, of course, manufacturing as a really big sector and, and power grid and, well, transportation and enterprises. Um, so these are the major opportunities that we think we can firstly go into and see. Um, uh, on the spectrum slide, so I think Stefan already covered most of it. Uh, if you look at it, uh, I think currently we'll, we were in the discussion uh, of uh, a potential set of spectrum for modifier uh, aside from uh, the unlicensed part of the spectrum and some of the shared spectrum, we're also looking into the so-called uh, some dedicated spectrum for uh, industries because we see there's an opportunity also for industries uh, uh, looking for their own set of spectrum, either due to their own uh, quality of service uh, considerations uh, to guarantee the uh, network performance. Um, many of these big industries they have uh, a lot of initiatives uh, to apply for their own spectrums. So we hope there's also, um, we are thinking about this type of uh, extension to expand the scope of our coverage. So this is also one of the uh, activities in, in the Alliance. Um, right, so uh, as I pointed out, uh, so basically in this slide, you will basically see some of the manufacturing use cases uh, and some of the potential power grid use cases, as well as some real transportation uh, kind of use cases that uh, we would like to share. Um, right, uh, I think we see a very good video on the port. So actually this has already been deployed uh, as a pretty pre-modifier uh, pre technology in, in this port. Uh, one of the phase one scenarios that you can look, can look for is that, uh, of course, AGV. There's a lot of AGVs in the port. Um, and for the phase one, uh, actually the technology was already enabling a communication with latency 50 millisecond and 99 reliability. So a lot of these vehicles are moving around the port. Uh, it's ready. Uh, we can enable the remote control of that. Um, looking even further that um, uh, there are really a lot more cranes uh, operating in the port. And a lot of them, the operation is very critical. So to guarantee that uh, you send a command and they really function as it is, so you have to have like a video feedback to understand that this actually works. So if you look at the requirements for that uh, phase two use cases, you, you, would, you would have to use less latency, even shorter latency and more reliability. And of course, the, with the video, you have a lot of uh, uplink, uplink traffic for that. Uh, of course, factory is uh, clearly one of the use cases for that. Uh, with modifier 1.1, you can have the narrowband capability. Uh, with modifier 1.0, you have the broadband. And we even did some even enhancement for the, for the broadband aspect to give more coverage and uh, mobility support. Uh, so if you look at what is happening in, in the factories, uh, of course, the 5G arena is talking more about this uh, uh, direct control of some of the PLCs. And that clearly uh, requires much more latency. But if you look at the other aspects currently happening in the factory, there's much more we can do at the, at the current time frame. That if you look at all this power, uh, all this uh, status collection, and a lot of this uh, asset management, and even controlling, of course, of many of the AGVs in there, uh, it does not really require to that level of uh, uh, latency and reliability. So a lot of this we can already do. 
uh, with modifier. Right, um, for Power Grid, um, this slide uh, we'd like to show a little bit on what we have been currently discussing about uh, some potential opportunity for Smart Grid. Uh, if you look at the power industry, uh, they have basically a transmission network um, and the distribution network basically in the between. Uh, all these use cases, terminals in here that you can have load control terminals, power distribution terminals, and utilization terminals like spot meters uh, in here. So all of it uh, are using basically the same network to, to carry all the type of services. Uh, but however, if you look at the current spectrum for this industry, uh, they, were, they used to have very narrow band spectrums, uh, 25K or 12.5K uh, around the globe. Um, these are the major uh, uh, carrier bandwidth uh, for this uh, industry. So, but every, everybody was going to broadband and trying to go to lower latency and higher reliability. And one way to achieve that uh, is probably uh, we, are, we are currently, uh, we have actually the state, state grid cooperation of China being on board of, uh, uh, to the alliance. So we listen to some of the use cases from their perspective and they're gonna make use of this uh, type of discrete narrowband spectrum. Uh, they're looking for technology that can aggregate all these existing narrowband uh, carriers to achieve some broadband uh, and even, yeah, even low latency services. Uh, for instance, if you multiply all these services, uh, these three type of services, load control, uh, distribution, um, smart meters in here, um, uh, of course for the distribution side, you have uh, to have very low latency and high reliability and to have all these three services running on the same network, uh, you need to guarantee that uh, there is a service isolation because they are very critical that you cannot uh, have uh, power meters uh, and not functioning well and affecting a lot of the control business in their, uh, in their business. So of course data security and also power consumption capacity. We're looking at uh, it's also one of the opportunity for us to enable. Um, well, if you look at the transportation sector, of course, um, uh, one of the sky trains happening in China is that they don't have their own spectrum because it's in the air. So we have to rely on sort of analyzing spectrum to enable service. Um, and of course they were, they were just trying to go from the starting point to have some CCTV and uh, passenger information system, just some information you can see in there, or some the communication based train control type of thing. Uh, if you look at that, most of them roughly around uh, 100 millisecond latency and uh, uh, liability. The challenges that we are tackling we, were, we are envisioned to tackle is about a very high speed for that. Uh, and of course, uh, also the CCTV, depending on how many set of uh, cameras you're trying to enable for the whole train. So there could be very large kind of uh, uplink in there, so to enable. But the common thing is that yeah, you don't have too much uh, to rely on the spectrum. You probably, there are signals or solutions for this type of uh, technology. Okay, that's pretty much, uh, I think I, I want to share with you on a, li a little bit of the use cases. and. Finally, uh, basically, uh, as the industry working group that we are set up in here, so we were basically the sort of as the interface for all these vertical industries. Uh, I had a mission to understand uh, the requirements or the use cases from the industry side and bring it to Modifier. Of course, we hope uh, that you can join Modifier as well to contribute directly in here so we can have much more dialogue. We will do based on some baseline version uh, spec that we have and to develop uh, catering to your needs, uh, some of the specific features that can enable your industry. So this is our logic uh, with the, uh, the modifier industry working group. Uh, right, thank you very much for, for your listening, thank you. So um, I think based on the current uh, set of trial that we have in China, the current speed uh, uh, from the customer side was 800 meters. Of course, we know there are also other cases, maybe not, perha perhaps not in the SkyTrain scenario that are requiring much more higher speed. And this is, why we think, one of the envision scenarios that we can potentially enable in the future that we, if we have really the strong need to do that. 
I think 80 meters is what we have tested. If you go even higher, um, well, there, there might be some, some improvement that we, we, we can probably do, I think. 